95%. They're in tough inner city areas. But all and and the head of English was crying because she knew two kids couldn't get English, which would have made them so. And they just couldn't. I mean, they had issues that made it very difficult for them to get English. Um, so, you know, it, 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 that model can work. I mean, my way of running the school, and I'm not saying that just because it is my way so I can talk about it, was, was actually very different. It's not the only, compliance, one would hope that compliance wasn't the only way. One would hope that you could go beyond that and kids would want to work. Because you'd work with them so that, that it's more difficult, it's a longer journey. What we try to do, and what we try to do never achieved anything like the exam success, nothing like the exam success. And I'm not sure it could have done. When I think about it now, I think, well, what would I have done knowing that the way I'd want to run a school might not achieve the sort of success that those very good schools have? And it's a debate we have constantly, and you'll find out soon in the group. So a constant, constant debate. Um, can you have a school that is less based around hierarchical relationships? Is the only <coughs> way to have absolute success that you have it running down from the top with everyone knowing exactly what to do? Um, can you have a school in which pupils have a strong voice in co-creating the education experience? And if pupils have a strong voice in co-creating the education experience, then staff have as well. And I remember when we tried to do it at Deptford, staff were saying, well, you're listening to pupils, you're listening to pupils' voice, what about our voice? And then you've got all of these voices that you have to manage. Can you manage that and still have success in, 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 in the classroom with everyone, in a sense, behaving responsibly and, responsibly and taking individual responsibility? Um, our hypothesis at the time, and this was the 90s when I suppose accountability was heavy, but not as heavy as it is now. Students living in inner city areas, and it, it, it was more the case in the 90s when results in inner city were terrible, when they're just not comparable with what you're achieving now. You know, you, you, you were doing well if you got 30% 5 A to C's without the research. And that, you know, it, it, it was, in that sense, it was a different world. But students living in inner city areas lack the confidence to believe in academic success. Build that confidence as people who are listened to by giving them a voice. So that was our hypothesis. Give them a voice, get them to talk about what they want, what education means to them. Empower them. So if you provide them with a stake in their own learning, you empower them. So they become part of the school experience. It's their school as much as your school. Um, and we had a vision based around citizenship, because citizenship was big, it's gone now, but it was big. It's going. It was big in those days. Around citizenship in the community, where you, you get kids involved in their community, you take them out into the community, you get them to, to, to involve themselves in community activities. Citizenship in the school culture, so that democracy is evident in everything you do. So students have a voice, teachers have a voice, and obviously there's, there's all the stuff around citizenship in the curriculum. But all at the same time, obviously you have to be reminded about the research of good, of good teaching. But those were the things that we attempted as well. <laughs> which had success in building a really, really popular school that parents let their kids to come to, that was doing quite well at the time. But I, I'm not sure by that one that we could ever have got our results up to the level that some of these places have compliance. And that is, I think, a big question for schools. You don't want compliance. You want the results. What is there in between? How do you build that vision? And also, how do you revision? Some of these are compliance schools have done it as startups. They've had the kids from year seven they've been able to build it year on year. How do you do that if you're in the middle of a school that's been going for years, it's got its own traditions, etc., etc.? But I still think there are questions you have to, you have to think about. And really, that, 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 that's what I want to say, because um, I think the essence of what I'm trying to say, and this is the last <coughs> slide, is you, you need to have a vision, and you need to pursue it collegially. Everyone needs to be part of it, and new people need to be inducted into it, and new people need to know what it is. And it has to be a tradition. What I found really hard at Deptford Green was we felt that we'd built a certain sort of school. And, and a new head came into Deptford Green and didn't listen, changed it, everyone then left, and the school started to, to fall apart. I'm thinking, if that was Eton or somewhere, no one would have said, well, we're not going to live with Eton, you, you can just change it. Because it's Eton, and that tradition has been going on for years. But because it's an inner city school, and a new head can come in and do what they like, and the governors weren't strong enough, all the things that you build up go. So it's got to be pursued collegially, got to be believed in. And I think if you have anything less, in the end, shortchanges the students. If you don't know what you're doing, in the end, inevitably, you shortchange the students. And in the end, you don't get the best teaching, you don't get the best out teachers. And also, you leave teachers dissatisfied, because all of their hard work, <laughs> you know, 
it's not collegial and you're not working to a, a purpose, will in the end get wasted because the kids won't do as well as they should do and uh, as well as all the hard work you put in, you want them to do. And, and that's why I think these sorts of days, when you're intellectually trying to work out what a school is about, are really, really important and really key. And I know you've now had enough of it, so I'll stop. Thank you. We've got a couple of minutes. Are there any questions that people might like to ask? I think Keith is joining us for dinner, yeah, so yeah. if you want to have a chat with a glass of wine, that might be more civilised. <laughs> so um, feel free. I think for me, some of the points really resonated. Um, back to one of the, the things we talked about earlier, that you know the balance between what are our principles, but also the stick end of it, where we have that accountability, and actually if we don't achieve those things with our students, then we are failing them. Whether we can do this, whether we can actually... <laughs> get the similar or the same results as some of the schools that do have that compliance whilst maintaining what Parkview is about. Now that's going to be tricky and that's, that is going to be difficult, but I, I'd like to think we can. I think the kind of work we were doing today and the feed you're working and the thinking, and as long as the word that just keeps coming through is consistency, as long as we have that consistency of practice and the children are getting the same quality of education in whichever classroom they go in, and we know what we're about, and we're using the same language, and we're just reinforcing, and positively reinforcing the whole way through. It's definitely worth the go. Because I'm not sure we could do that. I'm not sure we could be the compliant. No, I think, I think it is a startup thing as well, isn't it? And you'd have to turn the whole world around yeah. very dramatically. But we're not going to do it without staff, and we're not going to do it without, you know, it can't be me by myself driving this, it can't be leadership driving that. It's got to work, I think, all the way from the student rather than across. So I really appreciate your thoughts, Keith. Uh, thank you so much for coming to see us, and look forward to having a chat over dinner. So, thank you.